Hi, my name is Eddie Alim, and I'm a high-performance MySQL database consultant. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make a replication between Amazon RDS and Google Cloud SQL. Before we go going to start, there are some little information that you need to know to understand the environment I'm going to show you. RDS just only has a host name and no static IP. And Google Cloud for replication needs a static IP to address to the master host. So therefore, we need the kind of man in the middle proxy that will forward the traffic from the IP address to the RDS host instance. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have an RDS instance, which is going to be our master. And we're going to have an EC2 instance, which is going to be the proxy. And our goal is to make the replication running on the Google Cloud SQL. So let's have a look at our database. We have here an AWS RDS master, which is running. Um, make sure if you just have like a single master that you have at least backup for one day running. So the binary logging or the bin lock is enabled. And what we need to do additionally is that we have to enable global transaction IDs to make the replication working. Google Cloud needs global transaction IDs to replicate from the master. So for that reason, we need to enable it. Uh, what we have to do first is we're going into the parameter groups and we're going to create a new parameter group, which called a SRDS Google SQL. And it is for MySQL. Uh, Testing. It is for MySQL 5.7. Make sure you are running on MySQL 5.7 on the latest version. Um, as far as I know, that global transaction ID is only available on the latest version of 5.7. And we are going to go in here and just gonna enable global transactions ID. Enforcing it, we're gonna add the parameter and enable it. And the GTID mode needs also to be enabled and we're gonna make the changes. And now we are going back to our RDS instance. And we are going to assign the new parameter group to our RDS instance. parameter groups it is here and now we can choose the aws rds google sql parameter group and we will just click and continue and apply the changes immediately so the changes will be made now probably if we're looking into the configuration of the rds instance we will see here it's applying right now the parameter group it might be possible that we have to restart the instance, the, um, the, the RDS instance to make sure that it's taking the global transactions ID, but we will see it soon. So what I did here is I have an R, um, RDS proxy. It's a basic um, uh, EC2 instance, which I just brought it up and running. Um, the most important thing is that you need to know that um, when you create an EC2 instance, there is no, no elastic IP assigned. So what I did is I created an elastic IP and, and assigned it to the network interface. So this IP is always static. And so when I try to connect from the Google SQL slave to this IP, it will always be the fixed IP. So that is a different chapter. You can set up the elastic IP here and then assign it to the network instance. So we have it here. So we have the fixed IP. And now we are going to connect. One second, we are going to connect. I'm already connected to the instance. And uh, what we need to do is like we have to create a proxy. Uh, therefore, I'm using SoCat just for an example. There are other examples available which will be in the blog post that you can read. Um, there's a good blog post from Bill Schneider about the reason why RDS doesn't have like a fixed IP. And he just uh, explains kind of um, different solutions for having um, a proxy for RDS. So I'm, I'm doing a SoCat, which is listening to the port 3306. 
and a fork, and it's going to do a TCP forwarding to the RDS master instance. This could be an old one, so I'm going to replace it with the current one which we have right now. Therefore, I'm going to RDS. Let's see if I see here the instance. Uh, as we can see here, a reboot is required. So just uh, it took me a long time to realize like why global transactions is not enabled. You need to reboot the instance to make it um, enabled. So I'm going to reboot the instance. Now I'm going to go to the connectivity. So here's my endpoint, which I need to use for the proxy. And I'm going to paste it in here. And when we have luck, it will all work and we'll let it run. So seems to run. Now the first thing we are going to do is we're going to connect to the fixed IP, the elastic IP of the EC2 instance, which is going to proxy us to the RDS instance. So I have the IP here already here. The password is set. I'll make a test connection. And it seems like it's working. So let's connect to it. And we are connected, RDS master. And let's check if global turn, like the, the log file show master status. So bin log is enabled. We can see it here. Then we can do show global variables like, oops, GTID. And it seems like GTID mode is enabled and the uh, enforced GTID consistency is also enabled. So that is good. So the next thing we are going to do now is we need to create a bucket where we need to dump the SQL dump to um, the Google Search Cloud to Google Cloud Platform. Because when we're going to create a replication, which is going to uh, use a master outside of the Google platform, it uses a MySQL dump to import the data and afterwards trying to connect to the instance. We are going to create a bucket where we can call it RDS master, multi-regional, it's okay, and we just created, and that's it, we have a bucket. So in this bucket, we have to dump a file, uh, the, the MySQL dump, to later reload it for the replication. So you will see it soon. We can go into the RDS master. We see there's no file in it right now. So the next step we are going to do is we're using, um, or we're creating a MySQL dump from the RDS instance by using the proxy. I mean, you can connect directly to the RDS instance and we're using the RDS master table and we will do single transactions and we need to set GTID purged on. It's gonna zip the file and then the Google, the Google Cloud or the Google Console tools or CLI or SDK will copy the database dump to the S to the S3 now uh, to the Google uh, bucket. So let's create it and it's uploading the data. That should be finished now. And if we're looking now to refresh the bucket, we will see we have a file here. It's 9.27 kilobyte big. So it seems like the data got loaded and everything should be fine. So the next step we need to do is we have to migrate a data and not creating an instance. We're gonna migrate the data and we go into the simple wizard of the migration of Google Cloud. We click on begin the migration. And now we have to create the master name that's going to be our RDS master. RDS master. And here we need to add the public IP address. So this is the point. I was, I, I'm not able to use a host name. So I have to use a fixed IP address and therefore we will use the fixed elastic IP, which we have for our proxy. So create it, we're gonna use the username root, and I'm going to click next and now that we are going to give the read replica a name calling Google yeah well it's Google so it's RDS slave cloud SQL um, we just use a simple simple instance 
And now here's the most important thing is the SQL dump file. So we have to create use the bucket of the RDS master and we're going to fetch the SQL dump, the MySQL dump that we created recently and just going to upload it to the database. So the instance now is getting created. We're going to get an outgoing IP address very soon. And what it is doing now is it's trying to import the, the MySQL dump. And after it's finished the MySQL dump, it's going to connect to the RDS master server. So it looks like the replication is up and running. The replication uh, database is running on Google Cloud. Um, now let's have a look and create a connection so I can connect to the database. Uh, home computer, we're going to use my IP address here. Uh, we're going to save it. I'm also going to create a username from which I can access the slave replication. Remember that we only download or only MySQL dump, using the MySQL dump to dump the database and nothing else will be replicated. So I'm going to create here as well the same user and do a wildcard. And we're going to SQL Pro. I already have it here. So now we're just going to fetch the IP address, the public IP address of the instance. And I'm going to paste it here. And the password and everything is the same. And let's see if we can connect. And um, looks good. Let's connect. So let's check. Yeah, we can see here the RDS database is there. We can see the database is already here. And it seems to be replicating as well since there's many rows coming in. So slave status. And we can see the slave IO and the slave SQL is running. And if I'm going to refresh this, you see the read master lock position is increasing. On the other side, I'm importing the data, which is actually like syncing up, syncing the data to the Google Slave replication. So that's it. The replication is up and running and it's successfully replicating from the AWS RDS instance to the Google Cloud SQL instance. I hope you liked the video and it is helpful. Uh, please follow my channel or give me feedback. If you have any questions or something like that, just write and comment and see you next time. Thank you.